Okay, now we're live. Okay, so mixtures. We are over here talking about mixtures. We talked about a mixture, it's a combination of two or more things. It can be separated, right? Yes? We talked about heterogeneous. We didn't hear substances and matter. Oh, we didn't get to mixtures? No. Oh, perfect. A mixture, how did we not get to this? Is, oh, yeah, that's why. Yeah. So, it's a combination of two or more pure substances. So, a couple of my favorite mixtures up here are pizza, trail mix. Does anybody know what this mixture is right here? The air. Air. It's the air we breathe. Every time I take a breath of air, that is what I get. So, this would be over here. Mixtures. The th what's that? Examples? All these are examples. Pizza, grape juice, chocolate milk, trail mix, Kool-Aid. All examples of mixtures. Oh yeah, we did that in 10 minutes early. That's why we are not here yet. Mixtures can also be separated. Remember how we said that compounds are two or more elements chemically combined? Did we talk about that? Yeah. Yes? yes? Okay. So, the first type of mixture is a heterogeneous mixture. These are not evenly mixed. And would anybody here like a pretend cup of trail mix? Sure. I love trail mix. All right, I got two people. All right, hold out your cup. Let's pretend. Okay? Thanks, Don't eat any yet. Hold out your cup. Spare change for a leopard. Okay, anybody else? Okay. All right, three people have trail mix. Those three people, I need you to count out. Write down on your paper. Write this down on your paper. How many M&Ms? How many nuts? How many raisins? Those three people, write down, count your trail mix. Oh, shoot, I didn't want to do that. You volunteer. <laughs> All right, write it down. Write this down somewhere on your paper. How many M&Ms? How many nuts? How many raisins? We're going to do a little imaginary test. How many? We'll get there. How many nuts, how many raisins? Raisins, nuts, and M&Ms. How many? Okay. Nick? How many M&Ms did you have? 16. How many did you have? Uh, six nuts. M&Ms. Uh, um, uh, three. Three. Owen. Seven. Seven. All different. How many raisins did you have? Thirteen. Thirteen. Five. Five. Seven. Seven. Peanuts. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Good Lord. Four. Four. Zero. All different. Even in imaginary land, a heterogeneous mixture was not evenly mixed. Is it possible that one of them could have had the same amount? Yeah. It's possible. Could happen. Who here likes pulp in their orange juice? Not like that. It's an actual thing. Okay. All right. I just prefer not to chew my orange juice. That's just me. But if you're from Florida and you like fresh squeezed, I understand. I understand. So the prefix hetero means different. A special type of heterogeneous mixture is emissible, which means it does not mix, does not want to stay mixed. You can put them together, but they're going to separate out. A classic example of a heterogeneous mixture is oil and water. Or, who here has ever used Italian dressing? What do you need to do with Italian dressing before you use it? Shake it. Shake it. You're going to shake and bake. Okay. That was the okay. towel digger nights. Anybody? Yes. Nobody got that? Okay, somebody did. You just shake it first. Why? Because people aren't here. Oh, Talladega Nights. Did it help? Good. Good. So heterogeneous mixtures do not stay mixed. So we're going to talk about special types of mixtures. And up here I have an apparatus where I'm going to have three funnels like so. I'm going to flip this around. What do you mean, are they even? Well, there's two on one side. You're right, there's two on one side and one on the other. So up here I have three different mixtures. I have mixture A, I have mixture B, and I have mixture C. So as we go through these next three types of mixtures, I want you to be thinking which one of those they could possibly be. So, this is still under heterogeneous mixtures. A suspension is a special type of heterogeneous mixture. These have large particles. And when I'm talking big, I'm talking huge. Because when you think of particles, do you th usually think you can see particles? No. no. You would agree that you can see the tip of your pencil, though? Yeah. Yes. So, these are so big, they settle out. 
They can be filtered. Some examples I put up here would be bread and water, OJ with pulp. Um, um, they're really, really big particles. One of these here is a suspension. Think in your head, is it A, is it B, or is it ugh, C? Disgusting. Big particles. Un are you guys good? Can I keep going? Yeah. I don't remember them too fast. Another type of heterogeneous mixture is a colloid. These are smaller, kind of medium-sized particles. As soon as you get down to regular-sized particles, you can't filter it out. They're too small. But it also stays mixed, and it can scatter light. If something scatters light, it is called the Tyndall effect. Did anybody walk through the, this hall of Worcester High School yesterday? This hall around it here. Did you see like the light coming in? It looked like smoke. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's from the construction in the back. There was dust, right? And you could see that smoke, not smoke, that dust in the air. If I had, oh, I do actually. All right, someone turn off the lights really quick. Someone turn off the lights really quick. Okay. I'm going to hit this chalk eraser on my desk. All right, I'm going to shine this laser here. You guys ready? I can see it. All right, this is the Tyndall effect because the particles are, what's that? Did that like catch something on fire? Uh, this is not a legal laser actually to own. Um, only science teachers can get it. So you guys can see there are dust or particles in the air. You guys know what dust is? Yeah. yeah. What is it? It's like skin. It's 99% dead skin cells. Can you hit the lights? Can someone hit the lights again? So, some examples, some examples, shh, shh, some examples would be paint, egg whites, um, maybe flour and water. Those are colloids. There's a special type of colloid which should have never been created, and that is emulsion. An emulsion is when you force a protein. <laughs> an emulsion is when you force a protein and a fat molecule together. They don't want to go together, but you can force them together. And you know what you make? Mayonnaise. The worst condiment of all time. Who's with me? Who here loves mayonnaise? My daughter loves mayonnaise. Jovi likes it. Avi does not like it. Um, if I have a spoonful of mayonnaise, I'm out. I'm puke free since 2003, okay? No way. I have not thrown up since the year 2003. No way. Do you want to know why? I was in the Pacific Ocean. I was swimming outside of LA and I accidentally took a huge gulp of seawater and I just puked instantly right after that. Um, but that was 2003, yes? Um, let's say Lucy's quote is not correct. Uh, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. I thought that's Michael Jordan. That's also correct. But I think she meant... There we go. Thank you. These are creamy. I do not like anything creamy. Sour cream is an emulsion. Yogurt is an emulsion. Um... I think I'm more of a texture eater because I, I told you guys I have no sense of smell. I told you guys I had no sense of smell, right? Yeah. So I think I like am more of a texture person since I can't smell it. I don't know. But anyways, emulsions are a special type of colloid. Okay, remember, I got a one of those is a suspension, one of those is a colloid. So this is a zoomed in picture of an emulsion. So that's what your mayonnaise would look like under a microscope. Yes? How did you tell your wife that you couldn't smell things? Uh, well, it came up while we were dating. Um, I mean, I feel like that's a pretty important thing. She probably wouldn't have married me if she knew. No, I'm kidding. Um, I just told her. I told you guys like the first or second day I knew you. It's just a fun party trick um, to tell you. So it came up pretty early. It came up pretty early. I was wondering if I get really bad. No, I did not. That's good. 
Homogeneous mixtures is the other type of mixture. These are the same throughout. They are evenly distributed. If I have pour everybody a glass of Kool-Aid, is everyone's Kool-Aid going to taste the same? Oh, yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Like because it's the same throughout, like you said. If you guys knew. Now, it is good that the air we breathe is a homogeneous mixture. Why? So we're all the same air. When I take a breath in, I get all this. If it wasn't, it would be like nitrogen, <clears throat> oxygen, <clears throat> argon. <clears throat> like, it would be like that. <laughs> No, it, it would be like blocks of stuff. Well, it'd be more like, let me smithing, Sm smithing, smelling, sniffing. Yes, it'd be more sniffing than smelling. You don't eat your air, right? But if it was, think about it. If air was heterogeneous, there'd be like big pockets of nitrogen, big pockets of oxygen, tiny pockets of argon, and you'd have to like run around and try to get those. It'd be like Roblox or something, I don't know. Um, Anyways, be glad that air, when you take a breath in, we get all of that. We get all that. One special type of homogeneous mixture is miscible. Miscible is the opposite of immiscible, and these are things that stay mixed. It is good that gasoline stays mixed. These don't settle out. Salt water, it stays mixed. What's up? Hey, I've got quite a few boxes to go to the science department. Where would you like they look like chemistry books. Chemistry books? That's what it looks like. Hmm. Like textbooks? Pause. Let me see what we got here. What is this? This is all ours or just these? All that right there. Are these from the warehouse? They just came in delivery today from the warehouse. Well, I already have my books for the year. So these would need to go to the library for storage. Okay. If these are all the same, if they're textbooks, unless there's bio biology, maybe short. Zumdahl, Zumdahl. Yeah, these all seem to be AP Chem. Are these old ones? Tenth edition. Are these brand new? I don't know why. These should be stored in the library. Okay. Sorry. I don't know why or what those are. Yeah. Well, it's better to unload them now and then have to reload them. Okay. Missable. Stays mixed. What edition do I have? Yeah, that's really weird. Really weird. The special type of mixture that is homogeneous is a solution. So solutions, you have two parts. You have a solvent, which is what does the dissolving. Have you ever heard that water is the universal solvent? No. It is. Water dissolves most things. Um, and then the solute, what is being dissolved? The solute is what is being dissolved. These are particles so small they can't be seen. An example would be water dissolves sugar and you would not see the Tyndall effect. You would not see the Tyndall effect. Is that the end of your notes? No, we skipped elements and compounds. Oh, okay. We skipped elements and compounds. Okay. What about like particles? What? What's subtract? Saturated? Saturated. We're going to come back to that saturated part later. So, here, one of these is a suspension, one of these is a solution, and one of these is a colloid. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter all of these. So, anybody here ever used filter paper before? Here's how you use filter paper. So I'm gonna do this, make sure it's on camera. Oh man, I look very sporty. Okay. I'm going to fold this in half once. 
into a half moon. Speaking of the moon, tonight, 10.23 p.m., full moon, super moon, and partial lunar eclipse. Yes, 10.23. I will not be awake. I won't either. Um, no. Fold it in half twice. Again. My bedtime? I usually try to get in bed by 10, then I'll like read some. All right. And then to make a filter, I'm going to pull out one tab like so and check it out. I have a filter that can go in a funnel. You guys are going to have to know how to do that for our next lab. So I'm going to do, oh, snap. So I'm going to try to filter all three of these. So I'm going to put this in. What? Good catch. All right. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Now we're good. I'm going to filter this. And while these are filtering, we'll go back and we'll catch elements, compounds, and mixtures, which I don't know. What did we do that day? How do we only have like five things written down? We still write notes or types. Okay. Oh yeah, there was a lot going on that day. Okay, I'm gonna pour some of the blue. That was a great week. I'm gonna pour some yellow. I feel like you ain't got enough green there. I ain't got enough green. No. All right, here we go. I don't even see it. There we go. Okay. All right, let me go back over to, while those are filtering, um, the other part. That's too bad. So, do we have pure substance? Yeah. Did we write down pure substance? Okay. So, this is how we somehow missed this. Okay. So... The two, there are two types of pure substances while our mixtures are filtering. The one type is a element. Elements are your basic building blocks of chemistry made of atoms. They can only be broken down into atoms. They are organized here on the most important table, which is the periodic table of elements. I feel like this should be a picture right here. Like a, could you see it? I can. Like, like, with the flag back like LeBron that had his arms out like in that one time in Cleveland, like a billboard, just me like. You see it? Yeah. A um, couple different elements I've highlighted. Sulfur. I've been to the sulfur fields in Hawaii. You talk about smelling like bad. All right. My wife said it smelled real bad. Um, sulfur smells like rotten eggs or, as someone has already said this period, a fart. All right. Carbon is pretty important to us. Anybody know why? So everything's uh, carbon's everything that's alive has carbon. As far as we know, so far, all living things have carbon in them. For a life that we have discovered. Yes. What? We even breathe out carbon. Yes, carbon in the form of carbon dioxide. Um, we are mostly made of chnops. Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. That's our main ingredients. There's other ingredients in us. But what's that? Blood is made up of those things. Made up of those things. Carbon is important. Gold I put on here just because to get rich. If you want to have gold. The thing is, gold is not easy to find. Now, in the 1600s, when people first settled the United States... You could go out in the creeks in the California and physically find pieces of gold. Imagine that. Imagine that. Now, now it's so hard. You have to mine it. You're getting like thousands of pounds of like material and you're getting like one gram of gold. So you can still get it. It's just not very easy. It's just not very easy. Okay. You've heard, seen an element symbol before, right? This is the atomic number. It tells me the number of protons, electrons, name, atomic mass. We're going to talk about more of that in the future. If I take two or more elements and I chemically combine them, I have a compound. So if I take sodium, element number 11 on the periodic table, sodium, if you put that in water, it explodes. Can we do that this uh, You'll do that in, if you take chemistry. You'll get to do that. Chlorine, element number 17. Chlorine is a poisonous gas. If you breathe that in, it will shred your lungs by itself chlorine in gas form in pools as a solution it's safe all right i'm talking about chlorine in a gas form chlorine in a liquid form it helps keep the water clean 
If you put sodium and chlorine together and you chemically combine them, you have what you put on your French fries at the fair. It's table salt. They were chemically combined and made something new. Colt. Oh, I, was, I, I didn't know if you were going to make that answer a question, so I was just going to raise my hand. Oh, yeah, I was just talking about salt. If you're doing your fries right at the fair, you're putting so much vinegar on them that the bottom's about to fall, fall out. So much salt on it that you can see like pieces of salt. Ketchup on top and you just eat it with a fork. Yeah, so good. I did that once this year. I only do that once a year. Vinegar is actually not good for your teeth. So, oh, it's good for you, it's, it's good for you um, if uh, you have, um, what is it? On a vinegar, vinegar is good for you for something. Okay. <laughs> what it is, though. Great. Now is our notes done except for the saturated stuff? Yep. Okay. So, which one of these would you say is a suspension? The green, the yellow, or the blue? Green. Green. You can see, is this settling out? No. Check it out. Look at the bottom. The green is definitely settling out. Let's make sure we can see this here. I'll tell you in a second. And in order to mix it up, I literally have to do what with the particles? Suspend them. That's why it's called a suspension. Yes. Did the green filter out? It did. This is pretty clear compared to this. It definitely filtered. Definitely filtered. This is water. Flour and green food coloring. I call flour in there. Good call. Which one of these is a colloid? Yellow or blue? Which one's a colloid? Blue. Definitely yellow. Yellow. Yellow's my colloid, which means this should show the Tyndall effect. So if I shine a laser in here, it should look cloudy. It looks cloudy when it goes in there. Is it going through? No. It's definitely cloudy. All right. This is a colloid. Did my colloid filter? Yeah. No. When I mean filter, I mean, does it look different? Uh, it went through the filter, but yeah. particles were too small to be caught. To be caught. So this is yellow food coloring, water, and milk. And what? Milk. milk. I don't drink milk. I drink milk, okay? If you have a problem with it, that's your problem. Which means this is a solution. This is blue food coloring, water, and sugar. Sugar. Sugar dissolves. This laser should go straight through. It's kind of, it's going, all right? It's going. This is a solution. My solution does not filter. My solution does not filter. So those are my three types of mixtures. Okay. You guys all need one of these now. So take one, pass it up. Take one, pass it up. We're going to have time to probably get most of this done in class. How much time do we have left? How much time do we have left? Oh, uh, I think we need one more spot. They should have an extra in the row beside you. Here is what I'd like you guys to do tonight. Since you guys are not going to have a ruler tonight, what I would like you to do on this is using SIG digs, let me switch, using the significant digits, I would like you to solve for the volume of each of these blocks, show the sample calc, did they not have an extra in this row? No. Here you go. Show the sample calc for block C1. So like V equals LWH, three line method. And then on the back, I would like you to come up with a scale for your Y and your X. Let's talk about what goes on the Y and the X first, so you guys know. The Y axis should be, well, you guys already know. What should it be? Mass. So you can label your Y axis mass in grams. So mass in grams. You can label your x-axis volume in centimeters cubed. So I just want you guys to solve your four volumes, do a sample calc, and then come up with a scale on this graph. Don't worry about graphing it. We'll do that in class tomorrow. Yes? We have to use the three-line method. Only for block C1. Okay. Only for block C1. I think you can probably finish that in the last four minutes. Yes? 
So, get that done these last four minutes.